Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Graham, and this is Pretty Big Deal. What's up, Dallas? Yes! How's everybody doing? I, I think everybody's doing pretty damn good, huh? <laughs> We have got an incredible event, an incredible evening, and I'm so excited. I'm Ashley Graham, for those of you who don't know, because we're here celebrating the Queen Serena Williams tonight. But I just have to say thank you for being here, and um, thank you. So tonight we're actually recording the season finale of my podcast, Pretty Big Deal. And we're live for everybody at home who's listening right now. We are at Neighborhood Goods. I'm sitting across the greatest athlete in the whole world, Serena Williams. I'm shaking. This is just an incredible moment, and um, for those of you who can't see and that are listening on a podcast right now, I'm, I'm wearing one of the sexy white bodycon dresses from the Serena collection. Yes. It looks so, so get good your hands. On you. It looks so good. Thank you. Thank you guys that are here. That is like the warmest welcome for this crowd. Oh my God. I was not expecting that, so thank you so much. <laughs> So, okay, so we're at a pop-up. You've been doing lo lots of pop-ups across the country. Yes, yes. How many have you hit now? So in the last month, we've done three. Um, our brand is strictly e-commerce, so we like to, we're an e-commerce store, but we pop up. So people can kind of sometimes feel and see what we have. Um, but this one was really exciting to do here. First of all, partnering with Neighborhood Goods was amazing. Mm -hmm. They've been such an amazing, great partner. and. The store, the space they gave us is unbelievable. We just feel so honored. And um, I was here like a few weeks ago setting up and um, it was on my stories. I was rolling out the carpet. I'm really hands on with my brand and I really yes. love what I do. We're going to get into uh, that. Yeah. Because so, I need to know details. Yeah. So <laughs> it's um, that's what we do. It's just uh, we're strictly e-commerce, but you never know where we're going to show up. We're trying to plan next year. So if you guys want me to come back or. You know, <laughs> Kind of I'll take that like as a yes. cities for next year to see where we're going to pop up at. That's great. So um, those of you who are new to the podcast and everybody who's listening at home, we want you guys to get involved. So go on to Pretty Big Deal Instagram and Twitter, ask questions, let's start the conversation, and go to the Anchor app because you can actually leave me a voice message there. And in the after show, we can have a whole conversation and um, you can be a part of this conversation that we're having right now. So what I like to do on Pretty Big Deal's podcast podcast is do a rapid fire. And when I say rapid fire, I mean, I'm going to give you a pretty big deal sentence and then mm -hmm. you just get to finish it. So I'll say okay. pretty big deal karaoke song and mine's Shania Twain. I feel like a woman. Oh, okay. Nice. okay. Okay. So you don't have to sing if you don't want to, okay. but we yeah. can start with. <laughs> I lost my voice and I haven't even been singing, so I'm not quite sure how. All right. Pretty big karaoke song. Anything 90s, I guess. 90s, 90s yeah. baby. Uh, pretty big superhero power. I want to teleport because I could have been here in two seconds. <laughs> and then Lord. I could go back home and see my baby like tonight, so. Speaking of, pretty big Olympia song. Big Olympia oh, song. Um, oh, I, what is it? She's gonna kill, um, come on baby. Let's do the twist. Oh, let's do let's the do, twist. And then she does this, it's so Aww. cute. And she can't really dance when she does this. <laughs> And she tries. So oh, uh, pretty big phobia. <laughs> I'm terrified of heights. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And pretty big motto. Um, be seen, be heard. Be seen, be heard. Be seen, because be that's heard. why we're here. That's, that's the slogan here. for Serena. Yes, that's the slogan for our brand. We want to be seen and we want to be heard. I love that you said that because I just want to get into it. In designing for Serena and thinking about the woman that you're designing for, what was it about her that you designed for? So when I was thinking about who we are designing for, I didn't want to go for a certain age or a certain body type or a certain look, because I thought, I want to throw that kind of all out. I'm tired of these designers saying, it's for this woman, it's for that. And I'm like, no, this is for the woman that believes in herself and mm -hmm. wants to show it mm -hmm. um, by wearing something really fabulous or just wearing a statement. Mm -hmm. um, this is also for the woman that's uh, me almost four or five days a week, who's feeling really 
unconfident in herself that day for whatever reason, but at the same time still wants to believe in herself. And so we have other shirts like Be Seen, Be Heard, and we have nice, just simple slogans of our um, I'm strong and beautiful and sexy uh, mm -hmm. sweater. So for me, it's really just about, we, we do not too many pieces, but we do some statement pieces that actually say something. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just about that person that, is confident in themselves or not that particular day, but they want to find a way to feel confident, comfortable in themselves at the same time. It's truly Serena. Yeah. It's it's truly yeah. who you are and your message. Yeah. And I also love that it's size inclusive. I have to say, so I'm a yes. size like 14 and my dress is a medium. So all the size 14 girls in the world know that you can squeeze into the, the mediums, <laughs> especially if you want it to be body count, honey. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, but you also have a size inclusive range with yes. Serena Great. Yes. What made you want to do size inclusive as well? Well, um, we started out with with women's sizes, and I was like, this isn't representing all women. Like, mm -hmm. I need to represent women, and honestly, this isn't women. And I I really don't like that word when they say, oh, women and and plus. And I'm like, I don't really like that. You know, it should just be. Isn't it just all women? So. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of was playing out on my career because we have like the GOAT collection and then right. I was like, why don't we have like the great collection? These are this, instead of using the word plus, we should use the word great. Uh, um, and so, yeah, because, so. Because our curves are great. They are, right? <laughs> I know mine are. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what I wanted to do, and we're actually launching that today and here at Neighborhood Goods. So that's super, super exciting. That is great. Um, and it's official. We now officially have great sizes for forever. <laughs> that's fantastic. I didn't yeah. understand that great was because there was the uh, replacement of plus. And I yes. think, you know, no woman wants to be labeled because of a number inside of her pants. Exactly. So exactly. why not take and twist the narrative and call it great? Yeah, and, and just take off labels and it's you know we don't want to be known as that you know no, and we so don't. that was really important for me to kind of represent everyone um and be inclusive of everyone no matter what they look like what sex they are a lot of our stuff is um both men and women are wearing it that's um, fantastic yeah and that was really important for me too because um that's just those are people that i look up to you know men and women these are people that are my fans and people that truly support me so i really mm -hmm. want to be able to to branch out and to have you know things that can really different things in the collection that can fit all that can fit everyone. And you were talking about being so hands-on. I mean, I've heard that you've come and dressed the mannequins, you're seeming yeah. the clothes. Yeah. Why is that part also so important to you? Because it's really important for the team to see my leadership skills and understand that as a startup, because this is a startup, um, I never realized that I would be do I would be in a startup as a professional tennis player, but I am, and I want my team to understand hard work. I never would have been who I am as a tennis player if I didn't work super hard every day and I didn't do things that maybe weren't the most fun thing to do, mm -hmm. but it made me who I am. And mm -hmm. it's so important to to kind of spread that word internally, so everyone that does join our team know that. Listen, if Serena's steaming, I need to get out there and steam too. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want anybody um, lazy on the, so, on the team. Except for I don't fold. Um, oh. Yeah. I was fired, not because I don't want to. I was fired from folding. So. Um, well, you can't be yeah. great at everything. Yeah, definitely not me <laughs> at folding. So. Um, so your fashion's always on point. You always look and fly. Thank and you. your wedding dress Thank was you. spectacular. Yay. That. <laughs> the beaded cape. I just want to say, if I had that beaded cape, I would be wearing it at the gym, the subway. I, know. I mean, where, where, my wedding dress is actually in one of those Ziploc baggies, like with a suction cup vacuum underneath mm -hmm. my bed. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that your beaded gown is under there, or the yeah. cape is. Where is it living? It, I literally just got it like uh, two months ago because I had to go get it cleaned and everything, and it came back in like this massive box. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, so. Mm -hmm. It's in storage. That's kind of like a waste. But so I is wanted it still a cape. in the box, or is it on a mannequin? You know, I, it, it's still in a box, but I think I'll put it on a mannequin because, like, I'm in the middle of moving, so I'm like, uh. my life is totally turned upside down. So I'm kind of living out of boxes, and it's just really hard. Um, so yeah, right now it's in a box, but when I move, actually, it's a really good idea to like have it on a mannequin yes, have it on in a the mannequin. middle of the living room. Yeah? Why not? <laughs> 
and you walk in Serena's house, it's like this dress. But yeah, the cape was like my favorite thing. The designer's like, what do you want? And I said, a cape. Ooh. I don't need anything else but a cape. Oh. I'm, I'm a super woman. I want to fly. I'm a yes. cape. So, yeah. And royalty. And royalty at that. <laughs> exactly. So you have challenged convention on the tennis court, and you did it at the French Open with your cat suit. And then Woo! you did it. Yes. Right? <laughs> And then you had fun with the tutu then at the US Open. And I love that it was Virgil. Y'all love that tutu, huh? Oh, they have it on! They have a version of it on. Yeah. Uh, because the, her actual one was Virgil Louis Vuitton for Nike, right? Um, yeah. I want to know, what was the... Yes, yes. Y'all tutu is amazing. <laughs> Looks sexy. What was the concept behind the cat suit? Did you know the backlash that you were going to get when you walked off the court of the French Open? No. Um, actually, after my pregnancy, I had a lot of issues, and I was dealing right. with a lot of stuff. And um, uh, I have a lot of blood clot issues, so right. I have to wear um, either tights all the time when I play, or I have to wear something to keep my blood circulation flowing. Um, and so that was kind of the reason behind the cat suit. And I explained that to them, and they were just like, okay, but it was, I don't think everyone under, understood that. Maybe it wouldn't have been as much backlash, but I doubt it. But <laughs> you know what? I don't care. It's not about that. It was really about me getting back there in less than a year after having a baby. Exactly. It was really about, yeah. exactly. It was about me performing, and it was just about me not winning, but just being there and showing mm -hmm. everyone out there that, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. And, you know, we are strong and we can come out and we can play sport and we don't have to stop and we can still be working moms and dads and, you know, we can be great at it. I love your message, your constant message of that as well, because you are such a leader and you always are giving people the courage to be themselves constantly. Um, and I love how you speak about fashion and body positivity and you have faced so many um, stereotypes and amongst public opinion. And, and I want to talk about the scrutiny that you've faced when it comes to coded sexism and racism um, and, and, and how you've had to face those fronts. Do you ever just take a step back and say, I didn't sign up for this. This isn't what um, I'm here for. You know, I did. You know, especially a few months ago, I was, I had to take a giant step back. And, you know, I think it kind of worked out better for me because I was able to really put all my focus into the brand and things that I loved. And I realized that, you know, um, I don't really, for lack of a better word, I don't need this, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, it is something that I love. I absolutely love playing tennis. I wouldn't be playing this long and I wouldn't, <laughs> you know, be still doing it. But I think it's always important to always have something else and to have a different outlet and have different things that you can do because it is tiring. And sometimes I look back and i like, you know, I didn't sign up for this. I'm just trying to play tennis and I'm just trying to be myself. And I'm trying to be treated as every other man is being treated. And, exactly. Um, I think, you know, um, but at the end of the day, to answer your question, I feel like what I go through the next black players, and whether female or male, they'll have to go through less. And I honestly think about um, a player, I, I'm, maybe some of you guys have heard of her, her name is Althea Gibson, won the first, yeah, amazing. So I think, because I read her book when I was really young, and I just always loved her story, and one thing that I would always hit me, and I never forgot, was how she would travel and play with all these people, but when she would go back to the hotel, she slept in her car, because they didn't allow her to sleep at the hotels. Mm. And so I thought, mm. she's opened so many doors for me, so everything that I'm doing now is, first of all, so much easier than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm all I'm doing, I'm a vessel to mm -hmm. open doors for other people behind me. And so for me, that's super important. It is, it is. What's your advice for women who are getting, getting scrutinized every day because of who they are for standing up for themselves and because of what they look like? Well, um, you have to keep fighting, you know. We don't live in a perfect world, and by the way, we are never gonna live in a perfect world, you know? Right. And this is, um, this is the hard truth of living life in this, on this planet. Mm -hmm. So once we realize that and kind of accept that, you're like, you have to make the best of it as you can and just be an example for the next generation so things can always continue to get better. Change doesn't happen overnight. It takes generations and generations and generations to change. And I think 
lately in the past even 10 years we've made so many big strides but there's still so many more big ones to make and that's mm -hmm. okay it's just really about continuing to make those strides and that's why i love be seen be heard so much is because a lot of us are not seen and we're definitely not heard mm -hmm. um, unless it's in the wrong way then suddenly you're heard and i feel like it's really important for our voices to matter and our voices to count and for us to you know just feel like no matter it, no matter what we are what we can be seen and be heard I love that message. Yeah. I feel like you're always authentically Serena. And I too have always loved to just authentically be myself because of women like you, because you've allowed me to do that. And um, I've been myself and I make other people just deal with it. And I feel like you do too, except for I don't have the potential to be penalized for it possibly. And, and that's exactly what happened to you at the US Open on the court. And I just want to say for myself, and I think for many other women in the world, thank you. Thank you for standing up for yourself. Yes. Because you not only stood up for yourself and for the sport, but you gave all of us a voice, all of us women across the world, a voice thank to stand you. up for who we are. And we continue to need leaders like you. So thank you very much. Thank you. No. So let's talk about Serena as a venture capitalist, as a boss, as a woman who's just like taking over. Not only are you a beast on the court, but you are a beast when it comes to business. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing to, to um, visualize and, and bring awareness to sisterhood and companies and, and all of that that you're doing now. Well, um, it's so funny. When I first met my husband, one of the first things we talked about was investing. And I was like, you know, I've been really trying to start investing in different companies for years and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, um, in a marriage later. <laughs> and a baby. I think that's what it took. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, so that's kind of always been something I've wanted to do. Um, not only invest in other people and believe in their ideas, but also invest in myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's something I've been doing, you know, a little bit, you know, behind the scenes. I don't talk about it too much. Um, but yeah, it's something so that I love. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you just got to You know what? My favorite thing that I've read um, in the Bible is humi humility makes you great. And that's something mm -hmm. that I think is so important. Mm -hmm. I believe that as well. What compels you to take the ideas and, and bring them into shape? And, and what do you, when you see something, what makes you just say, yes, I want to invest? So I, I like to believe in, in um, the founder. And one thing that really um, struck me was a couple years ago, I was at this um, this talk with at J.P. Morgan Chase, and they were telling us how less than two percent of women mm -hmm. founders are in VC fir firms actually invest in, um, and so I found that really captivating because two percent is such a low number. Crazy low. Um, it's 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 shocking, mm -hmm. and you know I know we have good ideas because I know I have them, and I'm a woman, so I know there's millions and millions of other people that have them, women that have them. So that was kind of how I really wanted to make a difference and make a change, um, and try to look at women portfolios. And maybe I didn't invest in them, but maybe I would at least introduce them to other people or give them a different platform so other people can hear. Um, if I didn't have the capital to invest in them. Also, I um, just believe in founders. Like sometimes I meet, you know, amazing men as well that do really wonderful things. And I just love the idea of the company. And so it's really just about the founder. It's like your own version of Shark Tank. Yeah, it's like a solo Shark Tank, you know, or, <laughs> but it's but not quite like that. <laughs> but it's fun because even at Neighborhood Goods, where we're at today, um, I had an opportunity to hear about this this brick and mortar shop that was going to have all these brands, and I've heard about it a thousand times, but. Until the day I walked into this, I never realized how amazing it was. And, you know, being on the floor of one of their investors early on was really exciting for me because, you know, it's, it's a great way for fashion. It was a great way for, you know, different brands to showcase and be in like this cool experience, you know, and like it's changing the name and changing the way um, people are looking at shopping. Um, and so it's, I really liked the idea of neighborhood mm -hmm. goods and, you know, I thought it was really, really cool. 
What's your advice to women who are starting a company or a business right now and are facing challenges? Well, I think um, the, the best advice I give is you have to work hard and, you know, <laughs> you have to sweat a lot to make it and there's going to be a lot of mistakes but if you're not sweating or, and, and enough not literally but um, <laughs> emotionally but emotionally <laughs> and you know it's so important that basically means like a ton of hard work because yeah. you're going to hear the word no I can't tell you how many times I heard the word no for my brand um, and that's interesting to hear that Serena yeah. Williams gets no's <laughs> yeah and so um I like to believe that they're probably like, dang, you know, but, <laughs> I, <laughs> but um, it's also important to understand that that happens and everyone has their choice to put their money where they want to and it's no reason to be angry or disappointed. You just got to keep going and keep going and keep trying and keep trying and, you know, never really stopping and believing and working hard at your vision and the way you want to do. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the best advice is just keep working hard. Yeah. So I love following you on social, and I love following you with Olympia. And I think that you guys are just the cutest, and you've been so open and honest and transparent with all of us about being a mom. And you shared the hashtag, this mama, and you yes. gave the, um, the story about the meltdown on the airplane with Olympia. Yes, what? I think that was my meltdown, but yeah. <laughs> no. What made you want to tell us that story? Well, um, I love when I hashtag this mama because I feel like I can get this incredible group of people um, and women that give me basically feedback. It's like my community of mm -hmm. help, help, you know, I don't know what to do. Um, and I got so much good advice on how to travel with Olympia on the plane from then because, you know, she's running up and down and I'm embarrassed and it's just like, oh my God, whose kid is that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, she does have half a million followers on Instagram, so I'm sure some people knew. <laughs> well, I wasn't ready to claim that baby. Uh, <laughs> so it's just really, oh, it was really frustrating. But apparently it's a thing, and you know, if you travel at that young, especially yeah. when they're first starting to walk and they're first experiencing things in life, it's just, it's crazy. So um, that was always, that was really fun for me to kind of get that feedback. And I've noticed that every time I, I do share, I, it helps me. Like mm -hmm. I got so mm -hmm. many different good things. Like I get this for her, get this for her, get a book or a toy. And you know, I found that that was really, really good feedback. And so whenever I have a problem, I'm like to post about it. I'm like, okay, well, what's what, been what the best, understand? what's been the best advice? Um, the best one was at Wimbledon when I missed her walking and taking her first steps. And that was really hard for me because I was at practice. I didn't even have a match that day. I was at practice and um, you know, and then she took her steps and I was so disappointed. And then everyone was like, oh yeah, that happened to me too. Like literally, every, oh. like it was so many comments. Like I had so much engagement on that particular post and it was so many comments and so many people were like, yeah, yeah, me too. I was at work. Oh, I was in the bathroom. Oh, I was this. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's only in the movies where the mom is there and the dad is there too. <laughs> And, you know, they're perfect, and the baby takes the first step. So I guess I get it now. I get it now. So we're not living in a movie. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, that was, uh, that was really good feedback. And then, and it wasn't, what was so impressive about that was it wasn't just moms riding in. It was dads, too. And oh. I really, I really love that. And one, one dad write hashtags this dad. Oh, that's and cute. And I love that. And then I felt bad. I was like, okay, I want to do, like, a hashtag this dad, but I'm not a dad, so I can't really share the same emotion. So maybe <laughs> Alexis can do that, right. but um, I just love that they have that feedback too. It was yeah. really cool. That's so awesome. I have to fan out for a little bit because oh. being Serena was like the dopest HBO documentary oh. series that I've watched in a minute. Yeah. Right? You were vulnerable, you let us in and yeah. in a way that I I felt I felt like we were girlfriends by the end of it. And especially after the moment where you and your coach sat outside on your back porch and he was like, look, if you want to, to continue to do what you are doing and yeah. you want to be great, you've got to stop breastfeeding and you've got to lose weight. And after he said that to you, I bawled like a baby because I too have had people tell me to lose weight in order to be great. But in this situation, it really was a decision you had to make in yeah. order to be who you wanted to be in that moment. Can you talk us through what it was like 
not giving up breastfeeding, losing the weight, and making that choice yeah. as an athlete. <clears throat> so yeah, that was another myth I was living, I guess. I thought everywhere I read that when you breastfeed, you get this big, and so, right. you know, I was bre right? I was right. breastfeeding, and I'm like, why am I not losing weight? Like, I, I should be 100 pounds now. Hello, that's why I'm breastfeeding. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I, actually it works like when you first have the baby, like you lose a lot of weight if you breastfeed, but then you plateau, and then I think you have to, in order, at least for me, mm -hmm. I learned in order to lose the rest of the weight, you have to stop breastfeeding. That doesn't work for everyone. So there's, through this whole process, I learned that every body mm -hmm. is different. Well, yes. You know? And so my body, was, it, was, it went as far as it was going to go, and it wasn't going to go any further until I stopped breastfeeding. So when he told me that, I was just like, yeah, OK, I get it, I get it. Um, I had no intention of stopping in that moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know you did it. You were, gr you were looking back at him just like, like you were looking through him. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just like, I don't see or hear anything you're saying. And you, ha you said nothing back to him. No, I was I didn't, like, she I, just took it. Yeah, because I was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> But then you went and you, you, went and you lost I the weight. I went and I breastfed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you did right after that? <laughs> No, so it, it you know it, you can't really tell in the show, but in the show I I breastfed for another six weeks after that because oh, I wow. ha I had to be ready. I wasn't. I, you never can let anyone tell you what to do. You have to make your own decisions. Amen. And I wasn't ready. And I, I'm not gonna. I will. I can always play tennis, but I'm never gonna have these moments with my daughter again. And so I needed to be ready to stop breastfeeding, and that was the decision I needed to make. So <laughs> the next episode, he kind of tells me again, I need to stop breastfeeding. But <laughs> I um, eventually I did because I knew, OK, I need, if I want to play the French Open, I have to be able to stop. And so I eventually stopped, but it was, um, it was my own decision. And then um, and I talked to Olympia about it. I know it sounds crazy, but I Aww. talked to her. And I said, um, OK, honey, mommy's going to stop. And this is really hard for me. And, we prayed about it, and then Aww. she didn't even try. She didn't oh, even grab at wow. me after that. It was the weirdest thing. It was the weirdest, weirdest thing. Um, and but she got a tooth like the next day, too. Oh. So it was like <laughs> perfect timing. So it was like everything kind of fell into place. And you know, I was just like, wow. It was, it was really, it was, it was had to be divine. I was just no about way. to say that's the divine power yeah. of God right there. <laughs> yeah. And Ask then I lost like receive. ten pounds in two days. How many? Like ten pounds in two days. Well, once I dried out, TMI. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I lost like literally ten. It was insane. And I was what was like, the goal? What were you trying to lose? I don't know. I don't step on scales. Uh, me you know? neither. Right? Like, I didn't it get know you that depressed. was a thing for you. I, <laughs> so there's, like, a, there's a tape measure that goes around my waist usually, and then yeah. it's like, are you going to fit into these pants? It's all yeah. BS at the end of the day. Yeah, but right? I don't believe in weights or me weight neither. machines. Me yeah. neither. So all I know is that um, I say 10 pounds, but it was at, it, it was at least 10 pounds. <laughs> well, because they were 10 pounds each. So. <laughs> um, so <laughs> She cracked herself up. <laughs> she cracked herself up, ladies and gentlemen, at her home. OK, so we got to wrap up soon. But I want to ask you a very, you know, a, a question about the future. Because you have been so incredible. You're, you are the number one athlete in the world to me. And I think to so many people. And now you're stepping into another chapter where yes. you're a wife, you're a mother, you're a businesswoman. What does success look like to you now, now that you have accomplished so much? Well, honestly, success is just having uh, my daughter and just having her be an addition to this world and um, you know, just adding something and giving and just being a bright spirit here. So that like, is, if I can raise a, um, a good kid in this, in this environment, you know, that's like, that's my next, that's my next job, an <laughs> only job. Yeah, I like that. Well, thank you so much for being <laughs> here. You. And I thank feel like we guys. need to make a karaoke date because, yes. I mean, I, I know you can belt it and I yeah. feel like I can too. So <laughs> you like a little Shania Twain? I do love okay, Shania Okay, okay, good, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody here, that's live audience. And thank you everybody at home. Thank you. And, and I just want to say, please don't forget to 
be involved in the conversation. Talk to us on Instagram and Twitter at Pretty Big Deal. Also on the Anchor app, leave us a voice message for the after show. And do not forget, you are bold, you are brilliant, you are beautiful. I'm Yay. Ashley Graham. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Serena. Thank you. Thank you.